Hello, everybody. <clears throat> this is joint work with uh, Arya Kontorovic, and we're going to talk about estimation methods for uh, <clears throat> ergodic Markov chains. Let's set things up. Uh, we'll consider only these state Markov chains, and we can uh, basically identify them with a D by D stochastic matrix and an initial distribution. We'll say that a uh, distribution is stationary if it remains unchanged by the kernel. And we'll assume ergodicity. That will tell us immediately that this stationary distribution is unique, that if you consider it as a vector of entries, all are positive, and that uh, the chain will ultimately converge to this distribution. The notion of distance we'll consider is total variation. And uh, we'll, we'll define the mixing time, the time after which the chain has basically converged to its uh, stationary with, within a given uh, arbitrary uh, ratio. Let's say 1, 4. This is pretty standard. Um, notice that uh, the number of states d, the mixing time, and uh, pi min, which is the minimum stationary distribution, mi minimum stationary probability, uh, are nice ways of measuring basically the complexity of your model. And the problem we're, uh, we're setting is the following. Given uh, a confidence parameter and one single trajectory on this unknown chain, uh, determine some interval of uh, confidence such that we can uh, trap the mixing time with high confidence. So um, we're not allowed to restart at any point in time. We're just allowed to, to watch things happen. Why would we want to do such a thing? I'll give you the example that was raised a few times during the, the talks of uh, distribution learning, for example, where you assume that uh, you have a D-support distribution, you want to learn it, you know that your guarantees, uh, a priori guarantees of your learning will depend on the support linearly and the precision. And both of these things are usually assumed to be known. You have an a priori guarantee. Now, if I'm asking the same question in the Markovian setting and I want to you know, learn the stationary of this uh, chain, now I'm, I'm, I'm running the numbers again, but I see that because I want uh, fair control of the fluctuations around uh, expectations, I will have to introduce a mixing term in order to have uh, proper um, learning guarantees. And now you end up in the problem where uh, this mixing time is actually unknown. And you don't know basically where to stop your, uh, your algorithm. There has been some, uh, some prior, prior work in this uh, estimation problem. In the reversible setting by Sue and others in 2015, where they assume that uh, the chain is reversible. So the chain is reversible when those equations are uh, satisfied. And the strategy the, where, where this leads you is um, to, to spectral methods. Why is that? Because if your chain is reversible, then it has a complete set of real eigenvalues. You can order them. And there is this uh, nice property that if you take the, you know, the gap between the two largest eigenvalues in uh, magnitude, this gives a uh, fair control over the mixing time up to some uh, logarithmic gap. And so you've reduced the problem of estimating this, uh, this time to estimating a spectral quantity and the minimum stationary probability. By realizing the, that uh, the kernel can be rescaled in order to be made uh, symmetric, and by a clever choice of a symmetric estimator, you can then invoke nice perturbation results that uh, when, when I say nice, I mean that this doesn't depend on the dimension. Uh, in order to, to transform basically control over spectral values into con control of uh, an L2 norm. And notice that in both cases, uh, the, the symmetry was instrumental in this proof. There have been further improvements by uh, Levin, Paris, Keen, and others, uh, Combe, and Tuati. But all of these were in the reversible case. So we're going off the beaten path and we're trying to extend this to, to the gen more general case. Uh, the first thing we notice is that uh, our kernel doesn't have the same nice properties that we used to have before. self joiness is lost here. The eigenvalues might be complex. The kernel might not even be diagonalizable or, or even over C. And we don't know anything about the, how to estimate, in this case, the mixing time. Motivation is uh, the gu guarantees that I showed you before. We also would like to have them, say, for, uh, for non-reversible chains. 
Also, I heard that in uh, the MCMC community, there is now increasing uh, interest for non-reversible chains as it, as it gives better mixing or better uh, long-term guarantees on the variance. So how would you go about uh, improving, uh, like finding an estimation technique for this mixing time? First thing you can think of is, okay, let's, let's try to estimate the, the eigenvalues nonetheless. And um, if, if you see this, you, you, you can still lower bound the mixing time by the, the complex norm, uh, de depending on the complex norm of those eigenvalues. The problem is you're losing dimension-free perturbation inequalities here. You incur a pretty steep price for the dimension. Moreover, although you can lower bound it, you can't really upper bound it directly with the, with the spectrum of, uh, of M. So you have to, to go for another, another, uh, another path. Um, let's say I defined the time reversal of a chain. There, there are other results that says, okay, now if I multiply my uh, time reversal and my original kernel, I get another chain. This chain is now being made reversible. And somehow the mixing time is upper bounded uh, by uh, one over the spectral gap of this new chain. So perhaps this is, uh, this is one way I, can, uh, I could get some uh, nice upper bounds on my mixing time. Unfortunately, the, the bound can be made uh, uninformative. By uh, just designing uh, simple examples, it can be completely vacuous. Uh, don't take my word for it, He's, here's an, a simple example where the chain mix is fast, but the, the spectral gap of this uh, multiplicative reversibilization is null. We have to go for uh, more deliquate quantities. Uh, Paula introduced in 2015 the notion of uh, pseudo-spectral gap and designed uh, concentration bounds uh, for uh, non-reversible chains based on this. So here, you're, what you're doing is you're taking your kernel at different powers, different k's, and you're making uh, multiplicative reversibilizations for each of these. You're computing all those different uh, spectral gaps. You're dividing by k, and you're taking the max over all of these. But for, so what, what you can see is that this, uh, this quantity is much better because it, uh, it traps mixing time from above and below. Moreover, uh, these, all of these, uh, yes, all of these uh, Multiplicative reversibilizations are all reversible, so you get good uh, perturbation band at least at the first step of the of the approximation. And you've reduced the problem to estimating uh, two new quantities now. The drawback is that uh, this this new quantity is defined as a, as a maximum of over uh, over all integers, which isn't usually a good thing. So here are the results. We've we've closed the the estimation problem of the minimum stationary. Uh, probability both in the reversible and non-reversible case. In the reversible, the lower bound was, was open. We closed this, and uh, so the, it's, now it's a theta tilde understood. As for the spectral quantities, the first line of this table uh, sums up the results of estimating the absolute spectral gap in the reversible case. So here there was uh, still an open lower bounding that depends also on the epsilon parameter, proximity parameter. This is, uh, this is closed, so this shows that the, um, the bound uh, cannot be uh, generally improved. Yeah. Uh, as for the pseudo-spectral gap, for the, um, so this is the first time we, we actually have uh, bounds which, looks a which look a little bit like the, the ones of 2015, except there is an extra complexity parameter that depends on the, how the stationary distribution is balanced. Uh, but, uh, but wait, all of these uh, sample complexities, they all depend on the parameters you're trying to estimate. So it still doesn't give you a stopping condition on the, when you, you've managed to, to successfully learn them. Yeah? I have to show you this picture. And the solution here is to construct data-dependent data uh, intervals instead. Uh, so we, we've designed such uh, uh, intervals that are fully data-dependent, they don't depend on anything that you don't know. And after you've done this, I, I won't show you the, the intervals themselves, you, you would go out of room, but this is how they behave asymptotically, okay? Uh, in the non-reversible non case, where this dependence on one over k at the, in the second equation is how far you're willing to go exploring the integers. Yeah, remember it's maximum overall integers. 
also in the, in the reversible case, we have a few, a few improvements uh, of the order of square root of d for, uh, for the confidence intervals. Uh, and um, I think I'm going to stop here, yeah. if you have any questions. In the tilde? Oh, so the tildes are suppressing uh, logarithmic factors in, in any in any quantity. In any in any quantity, usually it's it will be one over pi star and d and things like this. Uh, 